Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and as you can see, we're going to do something just a little bit different. You may notice I'm missing my brushes and I have a smaller canvas. That's because today we're going to do our first acrylic on canvas painting together. Of course, if you're enjoying these, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. So as you can see here, I've got my paints on a, this is one of those disposable palette things. Uh, and I like this because it's convenient and you'll notice that the paint will dry. I've also got a handy little mister bottle. I've got some water because obviously this is acrylic. I've got a jar of water over here. And then I've got some different brushes down here on the table. So we can go ahead and get started. I'm going to throw right up. Actually, I'm going to miss the canvas. Okay, canvas missed it. I should actually miss my paints. I'm going to do that a lot. Just a little. You don't want to thin them down, but keep them wet. You want to do that every couple of minutes, I guess. Okay, I want to go ahead and paint a nice little sky. So let me take our blue on our little flat brush. This flat brush is very soft. It's a, almost like a little blender. There. So I'm going to come up and actually I want to go a little lighter than that because I want to want a little bit of a sunset up here maybe. But let's just drop this in. Now you may be wondering, well, why am I using a smaller canvas? What's the point? Well, I think for now, just for, you know, kind of Kind of playing around with some of these acrylic techniques. I think a smaller canvas is easier because it does tend to dry and this will help you blend color but you can do the bigger ones also and I'm not saying you're limited to this but it just takes a little more time a little more effort so just for the sake of, of kind of showing you how to do a quick acrylic painting I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go with the bigger canvas that was just my thought there now I'm gonna mix together here a little bit of a purple you see I use this purple gray here but then I think I want, you know, I want to make it a little more deep. It's a little too subtle, so I'm just mixing it up again. Now, you can look at this brush. You're probably wondering about this brush. Check this thing out. This is like a little angled filbert. It's a filbert on one side and like a flat on the other. Isn't that the coolest thing? So anyways, it's like a little chiseled or angular filbert brush. And I'm going to, when I use this to slice in my little mountain shape, and this is synthetic. Oh, don't use your oil paint brushes for this, by the way. A lot of those brushes are not happy when they meet water so keep them well away from any acrylics should you decide to dabble in acrylics as well not a good thing for those oil paint brushes there mm, I like it so this background is still wet that's why I'm able to kind of blend and see I can use the feathered edge so use the point and then you can use the feather edge to kind of sweep in that works well okay so when you put your brushes down dip them in water and then set them on the table so this one I dipped in water and set on the table but see, see, it's very saturated with water. That way it doesn't dry out on you. Obviously, you can't leave them forever that way, but it at least buys you some time. And then I can just blend here. It's very important that you have a good blender for acrylics because you do not want to leave brush marks everywhere. Sweep one or two times over all that. Call it good. I'm waiting for that sky to dry before I add in the clouds. Now we'll go ahead and mist my paints again real quick. Light, light mist. You don't want to thin them down. All right, now I'm just gonna, well, these are drying still. I just wanna tint the bottom here, the canvas. So I've back to my blender brush here. I don't know, I'll grab a little bit of our brown and whatever that is. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. Just throw this in, actually. Tell you what, let me just mist the lower section. So when you mist, you see how this is wet up here and I just tested the sky, it's still not totally dry. You wanna make sure you don't hit that with water while it's drying, it'll cause you problems. And I do believe that it looks like snow. I think you get like these little dots. I'm trying not to do it. <laughs> there we go. So hopefully it won't happen if it does. Then we can always, you know, put another layer of paint over when it dries. So, you know, it's, it's different from oils. There's just different ways to fix things. There. I've done a lot of acrylic painting, just not on a canvas. I've done a lot of uh, acrylic murals. So it's been just enough time that the sky is dry and I've got mixed up here a, a nice soft light color, maybe a little more yellow into that. And I've got for the first time a little tiny square brush, but it's a natural bristle. So anyway, let's come up here and again, totally dry and dry light, not just dry to the touch, like dry to the, to the rub there. Cause otherwise you might rub through and, and create some weird colors, or even worse, lift the paint off. You can do that with acrylics. I was noticing that, and I've noticed, you know, in the past, even on the murals with the paper, you can actually lift the paint off when it's not, when it's not totally dry. 
there, which makes sense. <laughs> this is fun. See how you just scrub it in? I like this little brush. You can kind of kind of get hard on this brush. And... Yeah, there we go. I love these warm yellow clouds against the cool sky. We may or may not float some of these over the mountain. We'll see. Actually, I don't know if the mountain's dry. I shouldn't do that yet. There. Now I'll mix up a bit of an off-white. I just add a little yellow to it. That's all it takes. And I think it's time to start working on our mountain. It's mostly dry. Close enough. All right. I've got, of course, my little, my little filbert. Angle filbert. Yeah, there we go. Again, this is synthetic, not, it's not bristle like our oil paint filbert. Of course, it's not even shaped similar either, but that's okay. <laughs> there. I just want to make sure there's no confusion. These are not the oil paint brushes. There. Okay, so see how I'm laying in this beautiful snow. Now, once I've got it in with my little, little filbert here, I want to, let me actually dip, got to, Gotta remember that, I hope I don't forget. All right, let me grab this other brush we were using. And I'm gonna just soften out some of these edges. Again, if this is not totally dry, you're gonna pull paint up. So kinda take it easy. Make sure you double check that. Now, in acrylics, sometimes they tend to dry out a half shade or so darker than when you put them on. With oil paints, you stick it on and that's kind of it, you're done. But with the acrylics, not as much. You can lose some of the uh, intensity of the value. However, if you've got good paints, you won't lose the color. So that's something to watch for. You don't want to lose the vibrancy of the color. Like that yellow, when it dries out, it won't be quite as bright, but it should still look intensely yellow. And then you can go back and add a little more if you want to. So that's kind of how you work with acrylics. Yeah, that's cool. And then just maybe over here, um, maybe layer on a little more. Yeah, oh, I'm going to cut that. See, you can just, just like painting with oils, really, in a lot of this. The difference is the dry time, and there's a couple other differences, but not many. There you go. I want my acrylic paintings to look just like an oil painting. That's the idea. I don't want it to look like a totally different artist painted. No, no, no. I want it to look like I painted it. And I'm going to work really hard to make sure that I come up with some techniques here and make the acrylic paintings look like oil paintings. Next, I'm going to work on what feels like just a little bit of a, I don't know, like a, a rolling foothill or mountain coming forward. There, and I'm starting to put a little color in it. I think we need that color. See, I'm just scrubbing it with my little flat brush. There because this is natural and we've got it in water, it is going to be, it's going to be rough. This brush is going to do different things. Almost, it's not going to go, it's not going to be really bad, but it's going to kind of flare a little bit and it's going to create um, some natural variation, which I think is actually a good thing. There. All right, let me just mix this all up here, throw some more color in, do it quick enough so that your paint doesn't dry. I noticed that happened. You see, I put a little more detail on the mountain. I noticed, I went back to, I wanted the underpainting for the mountain. It dried on my palette. That's why I'm using a disposable palette. There, so I had to mix it up again. All right, I like this. This is so far so good. Actually, I think we're gonna have bigger trees here, so let me just wish all this in. Now, as you can see, I have a basic sketch on the canvas. This is just like we always do. A little waterfall, some rocks, and I'm going to go ahead and place in some background trees. I've got my little a little flat natural brush and I'm going to come in and really just draw some lines like this. I'm going to put a couple of colors in these, not just one. And there's lots of ways to do this. This is just one certain way that I'm picking. You can pick any way, lots of ways. There, my color, see that? Got a nice soft green. Actually got a lot of different kind of modeled greens down there just because you're going to have to throw different colors in in order for it to look real. Gotta have a lot of variation, see that? Now I'm gonna tap on some leaves, just like we would do, you know, in an oil painting. Except the difference is, of course, we got a dry background, and you're going to have to, because it's a dry background, you're gonna have to put your color variations in using the palette instead of 
the canvas, the paint on the canvas, right? Because you don't have any wet paint on the canvas, it's all dry. So you can't rely on it mixing and becoming muddy up here, which is actually a good thing. <laughs> because acrylics, you're, instead of fighting the mud, like with oil paint, you're, you're fighting the harshness. You're fighting all one tone. You don't want that, so you have to have a, a muddy palette. See that? So you keep a muddy palette and you've changed colors every single time you reload and it'll help to help to keep your painting a lot nicer, a lot more professional looking. You gotta have those variation in color, otherwise ugh, you got some problems because it just won't look right. This will also help it look like an oil painting. Because I, again, I don't want to change. I want it to look just like it. I don't want you to be able to really tell. There. Now I'm making sure right up here is dry. This is totally dry, all of this. So here's what we can do. I can take my little mister and I can mist it lightly, very lightly, just because we, we know it's bone dry. You could never do that if, if you're not 100% sure, but this is gonna help the paint to kind of flow along as we go here. Now I've got my angled filbert again. It's the coolest little thing. And I am going to just drop in using our you know, little overlapping X strokes. I want to drop in what feels like a little, little bit of an autumn time tree. You can see I snuck a couple of autumn trees over there. Yes, that looks good. And as we come, see, we just build this tree out. And I wanted to do that with, with this brush because it just creates some beautiful little textures and details. I'm just touching it like this. And again, it will flow a little better because we've got the canvas just slightly dampened there. Yeah, now look at that little shape we've got going. Let's do another one right next door. Cool. So you see, they don't come up as high as those evergreens, but hey, they, they're still nice. I like this. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Cool. And then look, what's really fun is you can just roll this thing over and look, you got a feathered edge. Look how big that brush is once you roll it over. Now I've got something that I really don't ever use, which is a synthetic fan brush. But in the case of acrylic, it's got some uses. The key is you have to use it with paint that feels almost like paint you would use. No, it feels just like paint you would use on a liner brush. The reason? Because you don't want hard edges. You want fairly soft edges. And as this dries, over the next couple minutes, the edges will certainly soften there. And it also comes off in, in very small little strands, kind of like a, like a rake brush would perform. This is a very thin, this particular brush is very thin. So I'm gonna get the bulk of a lot of the foreground water done with this brush, and I might change to another brush. I wanna show you for other things. I'll, it'll be fun. Now check this brush out here. Although at first it looks like a, a little pointed brush, it's actually a filbert, you see that? Isn't that cool? So anyway, <laughs> it's our little tiny filbert. I just thought that was kind of fun. And I am going to use this to create, I'm actually choking way up on the brush, I shouldn't. I'm gonna use this to create a little bit more detail in the water area. See how you can, you can use that like that and put a little highlight on the top where you, you know, where it would be just because we're painting acrylic doesn't mean you can discard the rules of nature. And when, when people change, you know, what they do sometimes, and this happens a lot in palette knife painting, you know, and even for me sometimes when I change to a palette knife painting every once in a while, I forget sometimes about the rules of nature just because I'm less familiar, you know, with the exact techniques. Sometimes it's a distraction. So be careful when you play around with other things to remember that the, the most important thing is, you know, the rules of nature if you can nail that, then who cares what you're painting with? There. Nice, so I'm getting that little bit of a glow there, which is really all I was trying to get. Maybe down here, we'll have a soft glow as well. So now I just mixed in a texture enhancing medium right into some highlight color. I'm using the bristle brush. And honestly, what, what painting wouldn't look better with some texture? Part of the, my favorite part of a painting, not that I go crazy with texture, because I really don't. One of my favorite parts of a painting is when, in the foreground, texture is used to your advantage instead of, I don't really like using it in the background so much as I do in the foreground. So I'm gonna layer this on thick. There, oh yeah. 
and the, tec the texture will remain in place wherever I put it. I absolutely love it. It's important to me. There. Yes. See, I'm using the bristle brush just because it gives a, a much, much more random effect. Cool. <laughs> there we go. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to change the color slightly and just continue. Right on top of these, these rocks in the foreground mostly. It'll help to bring your eye closer to the foreground. And I think it'll just add a lot of visual interest. And this is something that I really, really think the painting will benefit from. I just like the look of it. There. And people never know if you did this in oils or acrylic. All right, well, I think we're done with our little acrylic painting. Now, of course, this is never going to take over oil paints, but I thought if you guys enjoy seeing it, we might just do it once in a while. And of course, it gives you an idea that you can actually do paintings that look very similar to oil in acrylics. So don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brushline. Thanks for watching.